Hello everyone, this is Luke Rowe at God's Increased Garden of all places. Um, like I said on the other video, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I said that I wasn't going to be able to plant in God's Increased Garden because I'm working full time at a um, farm in Holly, New York. So I won't be able to tend to this garden, but there's still a lot growing here. There's a lot of perennial flowers growing. There's a lot of things that overwintered. So I'm gonna show you um, some of those things um, so you guys can see what's going on here at my house. Um, but anyway, let's get started. Um, we're, we are, I also wanna show you like the forage greens and all that that's growing as well. So here we go. Here is the lilacs. They're budding out. They're looking beautiful. And you know, in a few more weeks, they're gonna be opening up. Um, hopefully the wind is not too bad. Um, it's kind of blustery, such as April in Rochester. Um, anyway, we have some, I don't know if this is a daffodil or um, narcissus. I always get it mixed up, but there's that. Um, there's stock in here. This is um, wild onions. There's um, evening primrose seedlings coming up. There's phlox. Um, there's also some baby trees in here that kind of get weeded out. Um, there's garlic mustard. Um, of course, we have the dock, one of my favorite greens. Um, for Scythia, almost all the flowers are off now. The leaves are coming through. Uh, what else do we have in here? Oh, we also have Asiatic lilies. They're gonna be leafing up probably to here. Um, and then they'll start flowering. A lot of times they do get the June bugs. So I hope they don't get that this year because I want, you know, the flowers to stay there. They're so beautiful. They're, they're, they're speckled with dots. Um, and I just want them to actually have a good season because last year they got destroyed once they bloomed. So I want them to do good this year. Hopefully they do good. Um, anyway, here's, I've, I mean, I have, I've never taken a picture of this before, but these flowers, they only last for a very little time. Um, what is this called? I forgot what it's, um, starts with a P, I think. Pachysandra, I think that's what it's called. But these flowers, are so cool. Little white kind of things. Really cool. And then we have some ivy down there blooming. Um, then a bunch of seedlings down here. I don't know what they are, but yeah, that's awesome. Here's the hedgerow. They are, these, this is all Rosa Sharon's and they go in full bloom. They look amazing once they're all um, flowered out and blooming. But um, the leaves are starting to come out now, so that's amazing. Um, yeah, there's just a bunch of other stuff. I don't know what this vine is, but maybe viburnum or something. But it always comes through the fence, and I have to, like, keep on breaking it. Because it, like, twists around stuff. But I think it does have, like, white flowers, and I don't think it's um, ferociously growing. I don't think it's a weed. That's what I'm trying to say, but... Anyway, um, and then here's violets, kind of heart-shaped leaves, really cool. Um, there's also dandelion underneath there too. Um, then we'll go over here. The grass is growing like crazy. Um, so dense and really nice. Um, there's more over, over that direction, but this is purple dragon or purple dead nettle. There's so many different things. And I actually found out that these have vitamin C, a lot of, a lot. Um, they can help with allergies, um, anti-bacterial, um, so that's cool. And then we have plantains coming up. There's dandelions blooming here, tons of dandelions. Um, and then underneath all this, there's gonna be a lot of seedlings growing. Um, I wanted to use all this dead stuff from last year to act kind of like as a protector so the birds don't get the seeds. And also, um, so they have um, like nutrients and stuff. You can see there's worms down here, very active. And th these are all from the wild flower seed mix. Although weeds, um, 
did mix in, but I don't call them weeds anymore because a lot of them are medicinal. So look at this beautiful patch. This is how they usually grow. They usually grow in groups like this. Um, I'm pretty sure they're a relative of mint. So that's awesome. And oh, and by the way, before I go any further, first of all, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it right now. Um, anyway, I want to do like I always do, although I'm not planting anything, I just want to show you the progress of everything that's growing here. Um, cause there is stuff growing here, perennial stuff and stuff that I planted last year that it can be considered a perennial, like the kale. It's never come back ever cause, um, well, first of all, I was uprooting a lot of it because I'm like... It was starting to rot, but um, what I did last year was cutting them to ground level because I heard from a guy at the garden factory that they'll come back from that the same root, um, and they did come back. So I'm going to show you those kale plants. Anyway, um, all this to say, I want to do a video um, every month like I usually do. Um, but there's not going to be any new plant or anything per month unless there's like a new forage green that decides to pop up or whatever. Anyway, continuing, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, of course, more of these narcissists. Look at the luscious blooms. They're just amazing. I don't know if this, this, this is the last flush of... Um, flowers because I don't see any more buds coming up so this is the best it gets really they're all in full bloom just jaw-dropping the beauty of God's creation that's why I love spring everything's growing the flowers this is their time to shine you know so and then here's more see you got to be careful not careful but of course it is edible but um if you look closely, this is a dandelion, but cat's ear, it's called, it has a more compact um, flower. It's still yellow, but it's more compact. So it has more petals in it and the leaves are thicker as well. Um, now, I don't know what this is. It might be Dame's Rocket. That's my guess because there was a plant, I'm trying to think. I think it was right here and um, it goes to flower every year. The It's like blue violet flowers and it probably spreads seeds. So I'm guessing this is her children. So they go all over here. It's amazing. Um, there's more dock growing here. There's more um, purple dead nettle over there. It's awesome. And then we'll go in here. Um, there's a lot of, I think this is maple trees. But maple trees are medicinal. The leaves are edible. So I'm gonna wait probably a few, maybe a month till they're like this. They'll be more easily um, taken out of the ground and maybe I can dry them to save them from tea or something. So there's tons of them because this is all leaves that I put down in the whole garden and they're doing their job breaking down, feeding the soil. But anyway, yeah, it's cool. All medicinal and these grow <laughs> as profusely as the rose of sharon's but again the whole rose of sharon plant is edible so i don't know um it's well it's actually my um my foraging anniversary was a couple days ago on april 15th 2023 that's when i started foraging but um anyway i was gonna put a video out on instagram but i just didn't get around to it um just collaging a bunch of pictures and videos of me foraging but anyway um anyway like i didn't know that rose of sharon's were fully edible the roots the stems the flowers all that um but like th anyone would be like this is going in my garden i don't want it but for me no leave it it's for my medicine you know that's, i'm gonna leave it um anyway so i was just gonna show you from this side of the fence but i'll hop over so you guys can see a closer look um so this is last year's leaves you can kind of see they're kind of darkening and stuff 
but there's new leaves coming out so these are still alive there is some dead st stems which is it's okay it, this is a perennial herb so i think i started these from seeds um probably about five years ago but it's awesome to have your own herbs right outside your door you know and sage is one of my favorites honestly we do have mushrooms coming up as well um i forget the name of these but they're coming up they love the moisture of spring and especially the um the moisture that the leaves keep in as well they love that so that's why they keep keep on coming up um if i see any more mushroom clumps like this i'll be sure to show you <laughs> but they actually they're not only in spring they're, they they can come up in summer too because like again i did pancake layers with wood chips and all that and compost so yeah it's awesome to see them that's a very good sign the fruit of microbial activity so as the apple is to the tree the apple tree the mushrooms are to the microbial wor world under our feet so when you see mushrooms it's a very very good sign that your 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 crops are remaining healthy and the microbes are doing their job in feeding the plant um so here is what i was talking about oh, i didn't do it straight to the ground but you can see underground actually you can see the branch right here it's coming right off last year's stem so that's what you do when your when your cow is done for and it starts rotting you just cut it um maybe a few inches from ground level so that's working um i don't know what this is i think it's burdock um and more flocks. Yeah, there's cow. I think this is mugwort. Pretty sure it's mugwort. Not sure. Um, now, cat's ear was right here last year, so I'm guessing this might be cat's ear, but probably dandelion. More mugwort. There's cow here. This is burdock, definitely. Um, the, the leaves are really too um, bitter for me. Unless I mix it with other forage greens or maybe mix it into a soup that has meat in it or something to kind of mask the flavor of the bitterness. But usually I just use the stems for an Italian delicacy that um, the, I mean, usually I just put in eggs mixed with flour and stuff like that. So I love that. Um, and there's a dandelion, a bunch of crabgrass. See, like, there's underground rhizomes, which is like underground stems, and they make a bunch of problems. But anyway, um, there's more li lilacs in here. The peonies are coming up. The tulip, there's a beautiful tulip. It has like tan flowers with, I think, pink polka dots or something, but they're just beautiful. The iris are coming up. This bush is so beautiful. The, there's still a bunch of flowers on it. I actually harvested from that one, um, but it's just beautiful. There's more lilacs here. There's tiger lilies. Haven't sent up their stems yet. Um, flower stalks. Um, but here's all the lilacs. Looking good. Um, okay, that's good for that section. And then there's more dock growing crazy. Uh, let's go over here. So here's the mugwort that I got from a friend. I got it when it was like this tall. Um, it is since um, seeded itself, hopefully. I think that's, I mean, that's why I'm guessing the uh, mugwort plant that, or mugwort plant that I showed you was a mugwort because this has gone to seed and I've never seen this weed. <laughs> in my garden before so i'm guessing it's the herb mugwort this is lemon balm um and i'm pretty sure it's kind of like hardy mums where you leave the dead stuff over the winter don't touch it because it feeds um next year's growth so i'm glad i didn't cut that down or anything um and i'm pretty sure this is glory of the snow it is um 
it flowered probably a few weeks ago. Um, now it's just the greenery is left. We also have lambs here. I think it's lambs here. Yeah. Um, they used to use that as a bandage uh, in, in the olden days. I think it was, I don't know if it was a civil war or something, but that's a plant they used. And then um, also on the topic of rhizomes, lilac trees have rhizomes as well. They go underground and they shoot up new trees from their roots. So all these new ones, um, they are from this one tree, but all the roots are making new trees. So it makes like a little forest effect. So um, yeah. And these are also medicinal, so I'm gonna use them like that and I'm not gonna worry. Now this one, this thyme plant doesn't look the best. It's lemon thyme. I did a very hard picking. I forget, um, last year or the year before I did a hard picking and it really set it back um, in a bad way. So there's a bunch of dead stuff. I just hope it comes around and does better. Uh, let's see. Like this is all new to me too. I haven't been outside here in a while. Um, so there's a lot of things that I haven't been really monitoring as I should. So, um, yeah, there's, I think these are flocks, um, which were edible. So that's cool. And then there's woolly thyme. Some of it has died because I put the leaves too far on it and it made it mold. So, but I'm glad this is still alive and looking good. We have this huge dock plant that I already have forested from a little bit. So that's awesome. They're, uh, I like when they're about this size, but they get probably like this and that wide. So, I mean, if you want a, a bigger leaf, you just have to wait. That's it. Um, we also have um, more burdock. I love it. Um, I'm pretty, uh, this is some sort of thistle or wild lettuce. Don't really know. I'm not good at identifying plants in their younger stage, but once they leaf out or flower, I'm all on it. These are spring onions from last year um, that I forgot to harvest. A lot of them are coming up, as you can see. So that's awesome. And this is actually, it looks like garlic. So that's cool. I'm gonna harvest those. If it's garlic in July, late, late June or July probably. Um, but these spring onions, they have huge greens, so I'm guessing, and, and very thick stems as well. So they're supposed to grow like this, but who knows, if I wait, I might have a big onion on my hands, or in my hands, should I say. Then we have more lilac seedlings here. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There's a flea bane plant gone to seed. Uh, there's more flowers here. A bunch of ivy. I think they're called periwinkle. Ivy, um, the rose bush leafing out, Rose of Sharon. I don't think looks like it's dead. I don't know. And look at this. I think it's an azalea. I always get rhododendron and azalea mixed up, but I'm sure this is an azalea. Look at the flowers, the green, luscious leaves. Look at the color. Just beautiful. Okay, then we have more dock, more, um, I'm just going to call them herbs because they are herbs. They benefit our health, so they're not a weed. And a lot of people, I mean, I looked up the definition of what is the definition of a weed. And they said, a plant that's not growing where it should. That doesn't make sense though. That's not a good dis description. What I say is, a weed is something we haven't researched yet if it has any benefit at all to the human body but if it is edible i don't call it a weed i call it an herb and it's not in a place that we don't want it's in the perfect place right outside your door how convenient is that how free is it you know it's in the perfect place if you want to live a healthful life if it's edible medicinal it's in the best place it can be right at your feet what what better place is that 
Um, and I did watch a video on the common dandelion. People try to spray it, chemicalize it out of their yard. But actually, it's sending down roots way down deep. And picking up like nutrients and stuff that fertilizes your lawn. Isn't that what we're trying to do with our chemicals? We're trying to fertilize it? Well, people don't like yellow things in their green yard. So what they what they do is just kill it. But if you want to naturally fertilize your lawn, you would leave the flowers, you know? And it's not like the blooms are gonna last a whole year. They don't, I mean, they might go into the summer, but soon they'll be gone and you just left with green leaves, but whatever. Everyone has their way of doing it, but just because everyone is putting fertilizer on their lawn doesn't mean you have to as well. Um, just think for yourself. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know what these are. I think they're a type of flower, of course. Um, I think they might be a variety of tiger lily. But anyway, we have dock leaves. More I'm going to harvest after this video. Um, it's going to be amazing. Now we're going to go to the backyard. It's There's a lot more things to see in the backyard, of course. Because... The front yard is just kind of small. Um, anyway, I mean, right now, if I was doing gardening in this garden, um, and I didn't have a full-time job, very busy, you know, then this would be filled with plants. But such is not the case. But, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't trade it, you know. So, because... I love farming, you know, and I mean, I just saw a sheep give birth today to three little lambs, okay? And I wouldn't see that if I'm, if I was at the same job as last year or what have you. So, I'm going to see where we should start. I'm going to start over here um, because um, I have a surprise, well not a surprise, but things... Crops that have been growing, overwintering, and they still survived. Um, which is just beyond me. It's never done that before. I always have to plant kale every year, you know? Anyway, here's a peach tree blossoming. Leaves coming out like spears. Um, just looks glorious. Look at that. Can you see it? Beautiful flowers here. Um, but it just looks magical here. Um, another flower. The pear, the, these keep on coming back. I'm going to see if the, um, pear leaves are medicinal. Um, we'll see how that goes. Because they keep on coming back and who knows, they might be medicinal. Um, instead of just cut, cutting them back and putting them in the compost, maybe I can cut them, dry them, and use them in tea. I don't know. Um, again, there's a bunch of maple tree seedlings but I'll just see I'm pretty sure the seedlings or forward slash the leaves are edible so we'll see um there's a stem from a kale plant I think but this one survived um from last year so that's great um let's go up here the tulips are about to pop as you can see um but just Maybe a week or so, and those red blooms will be amazing. This, I believe, I forget, it's been too long. I haven't been out here um, in a long time. Um, I think, I mean, it has a purple, and, and the spring onions were purple. So these are spring onions, survived. Um, I think they've been in the ground for a year, I think. If I put them in this, if they live up to their name, if I planted them in the spring, they've been there for a year. And then we also have a bunch of burdock here, a bunch of lemon balm coming back. Oh, so exciting. And they were setting seed, so I'm, I'm going to have a lot more than I did um, last year. So here's the seed stalk. Um, and those went to seed, and here's the plant again coming back awesome so you can make a perennial garden by letting everything go to seed and they'll come back next year beautiful i love that 
And then we do have more herbs here, planted by God. Yep, watered by God, all that. Yep, beautiful. Um, we have uh, the Black Magic Kale going to seed, which I will let. And since I'm not going to be gardening in this, um, this year, um, it will plant more kale plants. So that's awesome. And for some reason, I don't know if I planted this here, but my dad bought this um, uh, last year, I believe, in the spring. And it, we put it in pots and it died in a few days. Um, I think it was because of lack of nutrition or something. But anyway, I think I put it in the compost. And then once the compost broke down to my liking, my liking, I put it down here. So I'm guessing the bulb survives and it's coming back. So hello. <laughs> um, we do have more cow plants here. They're just like, hello, we're here. We also have a carrot growing. One I planted last year, hoping for the best and I didn't see anything until this year. Also, we do have collards. Um, I use this just like kale or a uh, cabbage substitute. Um, so you just take them off and they're just like cabbage, really. So you can make it sauerkraut with them or something. These are also going to seed because they are, um, this is their second year of growth. Um, but again, I'm going to let them go to seed and it's going to be awesome. More kale plants, burdock of course. Um, let me see here. Yep, more kale. These kale are going to seed as well. Look at that. So I usually pick the, see, um, so these of course are the newer leaves while these ones are the oldest. So while you're, while I'm picking, I'm harvesting the bottom ones and letting these ones grow bigger. So, and then here's the mums. Uh, I don't see any green stuff coming up yet, but like I said on the planting mums video, you're supposed to leave this um, probably until you see greenery up to here. And then you could probably trim around it to see all the green stuff coming back. I don't know if they survived because I wasn't watering them like I should have. But anyway, and here's the bell made by, I don't know if I, I don't know if I showed you or told you yet on one of the posts. Anyway, this. These big ones are from my grandpa, homemade bell. It was attached to like a wooden uh, circular thing and wooden inside to strike the bells, um, strike these, but um, it didn't really work and it was like cockeyed and all that. And these are from a majesty bell that my mom gave me. I think it was for my birthday or Christmas or something. So, and I put them together, you know, so it's more like an, maybe you can call it an heirloom. And then I found this top for a um, Weight Watchers uh, salad bowl or something that I never used. Um, punched little holes in it, tied the fishing string, and yeah. It's been going solid for, um, it's over a year, I think. So, and I knew fishing string was a lot better because it can carry sound through the string better. Um, or, yeah, and it's a lot better than rope. So, there's that. Now, for the hostas, I don't know if they survived, but we can go check. I'm trying to figure out where I planted them. Um, because it is the first year. Um... One was right here. I'm gonna see if I see any spears coming up. I don't see any here. I hope they didn't like rot in the ground. One was here. Oh, there we are. There they are. Look at that. There they come. This is the one that's um, yellow with um, light green. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay, then there's, I think there's like three right here. So we'll see. Oh, look at the mycelia. That's good stuff right there. So that's what's in the forest. Um, and 
I think I said this on another video, but what mycelia, like on this right here, what's cool is it's like the internet of the woods underground. So what happens is I've always wondered how in the world can a young tree gain nutrients and moisture and sunlight when all those gigantic trees in the forest like are shading it and taking all the water how does that work and how do they survive because we know that i mean the woods is still alive you know the trees are still alive in the woods and the babies are growing just fine so what's how, how do we reconcile this you know but mycelia what happens is the, the it's a whole it's it's a connection in the woods and they they tell each other what each needs so if a baby needs a certain mineral and nutrients, the whole woods is in communication with that little sapling. And they communicate, so, oh, I'll give you this. Oh, can I have this? And they all work together for the health, the health and the well-being of the whole entire woods. So that's really good to have in your garden. It's a connection so the plants can communicate to Give your plants what they need. Why would you not want that in your garden? And these are from wood chips. Um, I'm pretty sure it's only found in wood chips. Um, that's why I recommend using it in your garden um, for that very reason. What a wonderful, wonderful way um, to use what people sometimes think of as trash um, after they cut down a tree or whatever that they don't want in your yard. Um, but anyway, there you go. Um, so anyway, we're looking for a hosta. Oh, in there, there's also a flower I planted here. Flower bulbs. I don't know what happened. And I think there's a hosta here. I just don't remember. I planted so many different types of hostas here. So I kind of know the vicinity of where they are. I don't know if they come at, up at the same time um, or not, but I know I planted at least three here. I'm not seeing any signs of life. So that's kind of disheartening. Look at it. I think I broke one. Whoops. But look at this is a gray one. They all have names, of course, but I'm talking about the leaves. This is a... Oh, it looks so good to see them. I'm glad they survived. I don't usually buy plants from... Um, any place, really, because I'm like, what if they don't survive? And all the chemicalized soil that they were in, are they going to survive? I don't know. Is the compost tea going to work? Who knows? But just to see them coming back... I call hostas the perennial salad green, you know, because, whoopsie, and these are edible. I think the Japanese use them as an asparagus substitute, so I'm going to put that in my pocket and use it, because um, I don't want it to go to waste. I didn't mean to break these, but I don't know if they're going to grow back or not, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, I was just too overjoyed, and I was raking the leaves way too much way too fast way too hard so yeah i'm gonna use these asparagus substitute maybe cook them to bring out the flavor to see what kind of flavor they hold um but then we have more lilacs blooming everywhere spring onions i already showed you yeah all this is done i think now we're gonna go to the next section um if you guys are still watching Thank you for watching this video. It's so cool. Um, here is, I'm trying to think, either onions or flowers. <laughs> Cause remember planting something here. Oh, and there's dahlia. There's a dahlia here. But I know you're supposed to, you're supposed to store the bulb in your basement and stuff. But I just didn't have time to do that. There's more tulips here. There's, I gotta show you this. There's wild onion here. Look at how big those are. And it's only spring, it's crazy. Anyway, these came up 
under the fence and I pruned them right this year so they'll bear a lot more than last year so there's so many and they're actually starting to go into my garden but I don't care I want them in there it's gonna become an herbal an herbal heaven so awesome because I'm leaving what people call weeds because they're of medicinal value to the human body so it's going to become a huge herb garden now these i um we used to have a strawberry patch right here and right there um but they weren't doing really good and i think these are wild strawberries i think mixed with domesticated in the in the strawberries weren't really that big the squirrels were going after them and we're like why are we even trying to grow these but they've survived some of them so they're continuing to grow wherever they can so um more dock uh i think wait right under here there's supposed to be a hosta i believe or at least right here these were the green and white ones yep here they are look at that look at the colors it's not even the flower it's just the stems you know look at that um maybe maybe the other ones i couldn't see because they rotted i don't know i just don't know i'm not i don't know the reason um and i don't remember if there is a hosta over here or not yep there is the buckets were on it Hmm. I'm going to put the buckets over here because this plant needs some rain. It's so dry here. Okay. Well, I'm glad I found that out. That was close. Um, then we have iris. I think they're Siberian iris. Blue and purple with polka dots. Compost pile is doing good. It's gone down a lot. It used to be up to here. This is kind of bad news, kind of good news. This is supposed to hard up. It's Chinese cabbage. Um, from last year, it survived our mild winter. Um, but instead of harding up, it's going to seed. So I'm going to pick these like salad greens. Um, they look like a, um, like a romaine leaf. It's kind of the same color, a little fatter, but no less beautiful. So I'm going to pick those soon. Or just let them go to seed. Who knows? It's going to be a lot of seedlings, though, because look all those flowers. Um, then, I guess we can go into here. Um, I'm just so overjoyed. I haven't been out here in a while. So, good to see all this growth. Um... Now the mums still, I don't see any greenery, so I'm kind of concerned that they, they're they not really coming back probably. But I just want to leave it maybe for a few weeks to see. More kale from last year. Now I didn't cut these down to the ground. These are the same leaves. Well, I mean it's new growth, but the same bottom leaves as that went through the winter. These are onions, spring onions. Uh, interplanted. The rhubarb plant is coming back to life. Here's the flower stalk that goes up. Cow plants. Um, we have more Chinese cabbage going to seed. Um, I think, I don't think this is cabbage. It might be. Or it's collard greens. They look so much alike. Uh, pretty sure this is leeks. A leek. Two leeks. Um, and there's more leeks over here that I planted from seed last year. Evening primrose, looking good. Um, this is purple kale. I forget the variety name, sorry. Slipped from my brain, but um, they're already going to seed because they didn't really have a good life here on, at God's Increased Garden. Here's a new rhubarb plant that I um, got last year. Looking good. Um, I also planted a rhubarb plant. I think it was right here. But I think it rotted. So 
That's sad, but it happens in gardening. Then, this is overwintered um, garlic from the garden factory. I got a bunch of starts, so they're coming to life. And uh, I found these in the garbage. Someone was um, revamping their landscaping. So they were throwing them out, and I'm, I'm like, I'm giving you guys a new chance. So they're coming back strong. So there's one, two, three, four. Coming back really nicely, very strong. That's awesome. Here's a grapevine just starting to bud out those pinkish yellow leaves. The rose bush, as you know, leafing out. And garlic coming on strong. Um, it, probably in, well, I heard from a friend that they're coming in, you should harvest in July, but these are kind of set back a little bit, so it might be in August, who knows. <laughs> um, here's the hosta plants that I already had here. Um, so these are the oldest of all the other ones. Um, there's also the gray-leaved hostas here. Yep, they're here again. Yay, I'm so glad I survived. And then more hostas here. This was a big one. Yep, it's coming back. So even though I'm not here, all this stuff is growing back because it's perennial. It's Most of it is edible. Probably like 98% is edible. But um, yeah, look at that. And I didn't, I'm not tending to this garden. It's just crazy. I love it. I love perennials and especially edibles. Perennial edibles. Um, just coming back and wait till they leaf out. It's gonna be awesome. I don't know what's here. Why is there a bump here? I don't know. Hmm. There's just a bump how I did the leaves. I don't know, but look at that. It's beautiful. Um, the fig tree is not um, leafing out yet, but um, now some varieties of figs they um, they actually produce figs first and then they produce the leaves but this actually does the leaves first then the figs so um and like the bible says um i think it was talking about the end times or whatever but um y you know the leaves are gonna come out when the summer approaches so there's that um i didn't prune it because like i i told you on other videos i almost killed it because um it only grows leaves off of um last year's growth and i was cutting it all off because i thought it was i want it to look good and i'm pruning it like any other fruit tree but that's not how you're supposed to do it um so i mean it, but it, see it's a it's a um it's hard because i don't want it growing i mean it's so high like i could hardly i can't even reach the top here um but how am i gonna i mean i can use the ladder but i you know, I, I like standing while I'm picking the fruit, not on some sort of heighted ob object. But anyway, I want it like this. But if it's to the detriment of the plant, I'm not going to I'm not going to prune it. OK, just leave it alone. Just like the soil. We have to do something right. But do what the woods is. It's totally less work. And um, God's way is always best. You know, that's why I'm. I try to do no till. I suffer in an initial tilling, and then you start the pancake layers, um, or tarping first. That works too. Um, but we also have wild onion. All of it. Usually, I just pick the greens, and then the greens will grow back, and you have bountiful harvest. Um, I don't think I did hostas over here, so I'm not too worried. This is a big onion. Look at how big the shaft is. Look at that. The size of a dime almost diameter um succulent leaves look at that it's the healthiest i've seen ever um then we'll go oh but look at i just can't believe i'm so glad they survived so underneath this is the wood chips which again look at all the mycelial activity here Bec it's becoming like forest soil now which 
that's what I want. I wanted to try to copycat what the woods is doing. So the wood chips is kind of like dead logs and bran dead branches that fall in a windstorm or what have you. The leaves, of course, every fall, they um, they fall to the ground. So that's what I'm trying to... I'm trying to copycat what God does every year. So, and then we have a mixture of... The smaller ones are chives. Um, I think my dad or mom bought that for me. And then we have wild onion mixed in there. So, and I did put... I don't know if you can see it, bricks around it. So the sweet marjoram does not, um, cause I mean, these are kind of viney and creeping. So, um, I didn't want them to get in the way of this poor chive plant. So that's why I put the, uh, bricks around it. And then this is annual fleabane gone to seed. So we're going to have a lot of those. Um, we also have a hosta back here. See if it survives. Yep, here it is. Hello, how are you doing? Good to see you for since the last year. That's awesome. I'm just hoping my brothers know where they're planted because with the leaves on it, you can't even, you don't even know, you know? But usually they don't come back here unless they're putting the dog out here. But anyway, the, this one, it looks like it's still growing. Actually, I'll do that last. <laughs> that one's the best hosta ever. This is a very small one. A very, the leaves were only like this. Or at least last year they were. But there it is. I think there's another one. Let's see, yep, here's one. Hostas. Oh, I love it. Here they are. Um, then. This is a red raspberry plant that my dad bought from Lowe's, I think. Um, it did not grow for the longest time. It was like two or three months until finally one day in the autumn, uh, it decided to come up. And then it survived the winter, which was mild, thankfully. Um, which Of which it probably would have died if it was a very bad winter but um anyway it's coming up um i don't know if it's ever bearing or not so i'll have to see i didn't i didn't um save the packaging that it was in so that's kind of bad um almost lastly this is the, the hasa that has like elephant ears they're humongous leaves um yeah look at that Doing good. So glad. Most of my hostas survived. I think a few died though. Probably about four out of, um, probably like 12 to 14 plants, I'm guessing. And then the rose sharon, this rose sharon is budding out. I tried to murder it. It's coming up from a big um, stump in the ground, but it's coming back there's other stumps over there but i don't think they're coming back so and those are actually coming back from stumps too but i guess it's fine i try to cut them down because i want more sunlight back here um but i think it'll be fine because the hostas like shade um this is going to be a problem because it's full sun but we don't get sun because of that tree until probably like 12 or 1 30 in the afternoon um, so here's my mom's rose bush. It's doing good. I cut it way back. So this year, well, because firstly I had a disease, um, really bad disease. I thought I was going to die. So I cut it back to growth, um, that I knew was good. Um, and I did learn how to prune, um, last year, how to prune a rose. So that was very helpful and it was perfect timing. Um, so that's good. Here's more, another hosta. Um, I forget what color this one is. I think it's yellow and green, just like the other one. But this one was having a hard time too. We do spread ashes here because the it's full of minerals for one, and roses love it. So, and I think really any plant loves it. But again, too much is very bad for your plants. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true because how can you have more minerals than you need? 
I don't know. But anyway. Oh, here's another one. This is a smaller variety of pasta. So that's doing good. And look at this guy. You have to move this um, forward. Look at this guy. He's already unfurling his leaves. Like, look at me. I'm small, but you guys are not leaving out yet, and I'm doing it. <laughs> but... Yeah, he's doing good. Now the deer and the rabbits love these, but usually deer don't come back here. And I'm, that's why the ones that I showed you right here, those one, two, three, I think there's four, um, four clumps. They were eating, They were, most of them were being eaten by deer. They were just, you know, destroying them down to little nubs in the ground. It didn't, it wasn't with all the hostas, um, right there, but the majority, it was just to shreds with you, you know. They come up from the woods, you can see them in the early morning or later in the evening, but they just, they love hostas, so they don't care about your landscape collection, they're just gonna eat it. Um, I will have to refill this soon, because it's totally empty, and I did see bunch of bees stuck in there so we'll have to clean that up um anyway thank you for watching um like i said there's probably not going to be any new plants unless they're growing wild but um there's a lot growing and i just want to show you the monthly progress if i can of all the plants that i showed you and um i'll see you in may sometime so i hope you guys have a great day bye